one of our driving forces is to make technology much more accessible to ordinary people who don't have a lot of technology knowledge so that we get all that. We get the adoption and we get the velocity. Hello everyone, this is Alex from Gaines. Today I'm with Stephanie, who is the founder and chief development officer at Geek. How are you doing, Stephanie? I'm fine, Alex. How are you? Good, good. So Geek, some people might not know about it. So could you please tell us what it is at a high level? At the highest level, we're a new data services company making use of decentralized technology that we've invented based on some of the cryptography tools that have been used in blockchain before, reassembling some of the pieces so that it creates a database that's useful for regular people. One of our driving forces is to make technology much more accessible to ordinary people who don't have a lot of technology knowledge. So do you have some concrete examples of how you support these applications and what these applications that use Geek do? The basic level of invention at Geek is to think about using blockchain-like mechanism that uh, is able to transfer payments. So we want to be a decentralized payment provider for two reasons. One is that the centralized payment providers charge really high fees. It makes it difficult for people to just transact in a small way, the way we used to, if you had a $5 bill or uh, a quarter in your pocket and you could do something, but we have a difficult time doing that now on the internet mostly because there are minimum charges. And if you are trying to purchase something or sell something like a YouTube video, uh, you can't um, do anything a la carte, right? People can't pay you a small amount per click. And that's one of the things we want to do because we think it'll bring a lot of freedom. Other thing that we really drives our values is that there is this agglomeration of tech companies that can take your data. And when you are a decentralized, truly decentralized technology that just connects through a network of nodes, we don't see your data. We don't care. We uh, don't know who's behind that account number. We just log the transactions. And so I think that's really important for people not to have to have their transaction history all in some huge database somewhere. All right, so let's start with the micropayments. I guess the basic example that people will go to is Litecoin. So how are you different than Litecoin? That goes to the central mechanism. Uh, and I know I should be technology light, but the um, blockchain networks uh, tend to have competition for the rewards. And Geek is different because the mechanism just pays people automatically for giving some of their computing power, their excess computing power to join the network as long as they obey the rules. So in terms of what a person has to do to be a part of this network, it's barely nothing. They just set their computer on to follow the rules and then they get paid. They get paid for honest work that keeps costs really low because what we can do is we can find misbehaving computers or nodes and the network tosses them out. So that keeps it very low cost. It's just, everything is automatic. Gotcha. So your consensus protocol is named proof of honesty, as you mentioned, compared yeah. to proof of work or proof of stake. So how is proof of honesty different than all these others proof of in Geek, we have what's called a no consensus consensus, which is that there's no voting. There are only rules and, and we called it honesty, but really it's pure logic that there are a set of, um, there used to be about 25 very short statements. Uh, you know, is this signature the same? And you go down, we've written these um, account records so that uh, they're very, very simple statements to check. Some of them are joint statements, but they're truth statements, essentially. 
And so that's why we can call it honesty because there's no discretion involved, no voting involved. And if a node is doing something right, then they get paid. And if a node is breaking the rules, then they get audited and thrown out. And so the way that we agree on a ledger is every honest node will do the same thing. You give them the same inputs, they have the same rules, they should come up with the same answer. And that's how we get some kind of look of consensus. At the beginning, you said you're a normal person, but uh, some people might wonder who the hell uh, is Stephanie to just come up with a new consensus mechanism and uh, think, you know, she can do better than proof of stake or, or whatever. Uh, so I think it'd be interesting for uh, the viewers uh, to know more about your background and also the team's background more generally with the team behind Geek, because creating a new consensus algorithm is not something light, I guess. Thanks for asking, because I can't take credit. Um, so thanks for asking about the team. We started out by being really concerned that this technology was going to eventually spread to the entire world and, and underlie all the financial um, transactions and all the data. My better half, John, is one of the founders and he's a very rigorous theorist with background in mathematical axiomatic game theory and economic mechanism design. And so he's the one who really goes through the proofs and boils it down, you know, axioms, right? You start at the beginning. <laughs> and so he's the one who says, okay, how do I boil this down to the minimum set that I need that these nodes are doing the correct thing? And that's taken a long time for him to do. Um, but fortunately we have a team that all thinks the same way, that this is, this must be a very rigorous thing. If you're going to put large sums of money, you can't leave it to a vote. You have to make sure that you're following certain rules. And then my part comes in by saying, I have a bit of economics and a little bit of policy background and sort of think about um, political science in graduate school. And we all know if you are in social sciences, uh, the voting can be very heavily manipulated. It's the person who gets to set the agenda that usually can manipulate the outcome. That's something we know from political science. And so most of the um, things that we see in the real world are really tussles over who gets to set the agenda, who gets to set the rules about who votes. And we wanted to make a mechanism where there was no voting as a data company. Um, if you want the data to be there, you want the right data to be there with, with no subjective decisions. I guess in the end, it comes down to adoption. And so let's say adoption is taken care of. There's lots of people, lots of companies using that. How will the token price appreciate? What are the token economics, the incentives? Uh, is there any token burn? Is, the, is it used for transactions? You mentioned people need to stake it, I believe, or something like that. So the multi-chain aspect of Geek is set up as its own uh, ecosystem, but really we think of it as a digital economy. So if you have a digital economy, that's very exciting because you can start an economy with its own token from scratch, right? And so the tokenomics, that, the way that we think about it is to provide some degree of certainty to the people who are in that economy so they can count on it as having some value as they make their exchanges instead of being completely volatile. So one of the things that we know in um, regular e economies is that the Fed or central banks try to surprise people all the time, right? And then people get hit. If there's inflation, if they print money, people get hit with an inflation tax. And so in this economy, we have a chance to not do that, but promise transparently, this is what we're going to do in this economy token use will depend on 
velocity, we have to get adoption, and value will depend on that. We work very, very hard to make it useful so that we get all that. We get the adoption and we get the velocity. And so we don't burn tokens because that's, we, we don't really particularly want to restrict supply because we want it to be used, <laughs> but we don't want it to be the economy to be flooded either. So it's, it's a system that lets us release tokens as growth and usage occurs. Um, cool. Is there, is there anything else you'd like to mention what you guys are up to recently? Uh, I believe we mentioned micropayments, anything exciting you'd like to share with us? I'd really love to share because it happened yesterday that we released a testing framework that shows that if you fund from your geek coin account, these small micropayments that we can make it, uh, two or three clicks to purchase, um, content on the web. So we have a demo site called gomicro.geek.io. And it's really fun to put together because you see everything happening on chain. So you can see that you have a coin account. You can see that you can submit these orders. Technically they're called bearer tokens, which will be familiar to everybody in finance. Um, these bearer tokens can be cashed in um, on chain. And then we have a website mocked up so it has videos, it has music, it has um, art, it has do-it-yourself recipes. You can start to imagine the creator economy being powered by this micropayments. Um, and then all I do is click a button. Yes, I want to watch that video. It says, will you authorize this from your, from your little extension where you're carrying around these micropayments. So one click that I want to watch the video, one click that um, I'm willing to pay for it, the video is there for you. And the creator gets paid and no uh, central intermediary taking a big cut. So we, cool. we're calling that geek pay right now. Nice. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Stephanie, for these words. Uh, drop a like if you liked the video. Write a comment, that might be the starting point of a discussion and share the video to your friends. Maybe they'll have a cool idea and they will build something on Geek, micropayments, gaming, skins, funding, games, whatever, who knows. Uh, I guess uh, only the future will tell. So thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Alex. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.